There's a whole rolling like a six shot gun And the miles keep dragging on and on and on Grabbing a long one, laughing on the wrong wind, whistling the devil's outlaw song. And he's strong to know. He said, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. What's going on, everybody? You're tuned in to Off the Yard, man. And, uh, you know, been a couple weeks, had to make a little hiatus because we just moved into our new place. And um, it's been uh, it's been hectic, man. It's definitely been hectic. But, um, hey, man, it, it is what it is, man. Sometimes you got to take the time off to, you know, do what you got to do. So today we're talking about prison politics and how sometimes somebody else's shit can get you jammed up, man. And um, especially if you if you're part of an organization, man. Right now, if if you're in an organization, or in my sick case, like I had actually risen to the top of an organization, you you take on a lot of people's bullshit. Right, and um, by taking on that bullshit, you don't, you take on the good things about them, their good qualities, and this, that, and the third. But you also take on their mistakes and their fuck ups. So, this is a story about a dude that we had that that was riding the whip, whip with us, and uh, uh, he was a tattoo guy, right? Did a lot, a couple, a lot of my tattoos actually, and um, but most tattoo guys are are druggies, man. You know what I'm saying? Most of them are, you know, getting high. A lot of times they're doing tattoos to get high. But what happens is they'll get the drugs first and say, oh, I hit you off a tattoo for this later. But they do it so many times that they lose track of who they owe tattoos to. <laughs> and this is kind of what happened in this circumstance. This dude ran up a bill. I mean, a debt. I mean, a doozy. Right? And, um unbeknownst to me at this at, well at this time my organization was on full lockdown when it came to drugs because we were actually in a kind of a tight situation with another organization that wanted everybody to be sharp so it was a like a minimal drug use policy that we were we were really trying to enforce at the time which is hard especially when dealing with a bunch of crackers man <laughs> you know what I'm saying we like to party man we like to get high so anyway the homie is Owen Dent's telling people he's gonna do tattoos and da 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 da. Well, he ends up owing some dudes for some tattoo work. So the dudes that he owes is part of another organization. Now, the head of that organization, it's okay. I know you're a little backed up, even though you're not gonna meet the timeline. They had this little dude that was holding their blades for him. And he needed a cell. So they moved him into my tattoo guy's cell. And now not only do you owe all this money, but now you've got this other motherfucker who's basically a flunky for these dudes, this other little white boy, who is holding all these knives in the cell that you're in, putting all of us at risk of getting locked down and getting in a jam, running us all up on a snag because you owe money. So the tattoo dude is like, yeah, you can move him in here. Right? Just don't tell Pops, which is me, don't tell Pops that I owe you the money. But pops run around thinking shit's sweet, thinking that everything's good. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Anyway, what ends up happening is the cell gets shook down because he's got somebody in the cell tattooing on him, right? And when the people run in on the cell because of the tattoo, they find the dude holding all these fucking knives, like 10 knives up in this cell, bro. Like, why y'all got so many knives? So dude's trying to hold his water, right? But, you know, he, it's, 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 
He's not trying to snitch, but he's getting ready to get a damn street case. Anyway, I'm on the yard. Check this shit out. And this is how, this was at Greensville. And you hear a lot of the Virginia guys, me, uh, Death, Jay Williams. We all talk about this, this Greensville spot, right? This place is where it's at. So this is how crazy Greensville is. Um, I'm on the yard and it's one of the, this, this organizational guy, this organizational guys comes up to me. He's like, uh, yo, you need to come to the sergeant's office. They got homie fucked up. Such and such is there. He needs to holler at you because our guy is getting tore off too, right? So I'm like, what the fuck? So I go to the office. They got the sergeant with the lieutenant sitting in this office. My homie in handcuffs. They're flunky in handcuffs. And, and the, 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 okay, and the situation is that I'm going to end up owing, apparently, because my guy got his guy tore off. And they want my guy to take the rap because my guy's getting ready to go home. My guy's not trying to take the rap. He's afraid he's going to lose his good time. The other motherfucker's putting the whole blame on my guy because that's what he's being told to do. Tell me that ain't some fucked up shit. And if I don't get my dude to say that it's his, then we're going to go to war with these dudes. And these dudes were definitely deeper than us. So this is a situation where you're thinking to yourself, okay, <laughs> you know, what do you do? What do you do? Do you follow your instincts? Do you go with loyalty? Do you say, fuck it and go to war? Either way, it's costly. Either way, somebody's going to have to take some sort of fall. And either way, you know, you, you try to come out on top in some form or fashion. You can't look weak. You can't look soft on the yard. You can't be told what to do by another organization. Right? So this is what I did. I told the dude, I said, I'm not telling that guy. I'm not telling him to take the blame for the blades. I'll tell him to take the blame for his shit, for his own tattoo shit. Whatever money he owed you for the tattoos, I'll straighten on my end. I have 15 tattoo artists in the whip, so it didn't matter. Tattoos weren't an issue. That's how I saved the day. I could produce a lot of tattoo work very fast. I could do it myself. So that's how I fixed it. Because he didn't really give a fuck about that kid that he was sending down the road on them knife charges. All he really cared about was getting what he was owed. Now, if I would have gone with my instinct as a man and gone off the emotions and been like, you ain't going to tell me what to do, da 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 da, da I would have gone to war and lost a lot of guys. I would have lost a lot of money. I would have lost a lot more money going to war than I would have doing these fucking tattoos. All that dude wanted was some tattoos. That was it. So at the end of the day, I ended up sitting out about 20 hours with a tattoo work to save a war. But pride's a motherfucker, ain't it? Pride is a motherfucker. It will get you jammed up every time. And I guess the only thing you can try to really do is stay sucker free. And that's what we try to do right here, baby. Sucker free nation. Big Lance off the yard. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Got plenty more coming. You know, we like to talk prison, prison politics, prison food, prison workouts, prison freaking whatever. Prison, prison, prison. But I hope everybody's doing well, man. And, uh, you know, out here in the world, it's a, you know, it's a tough dose of times. Max! Max trying to eat the flowers. It's a tough dose of times, but we got to take it, man. We got to endure and we got to try to persevere, man, over all things, man. Uh, and the only thing you really try to do is stay up and stay out. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay sucker free. <laughs>